And it is with great pleasure that I want to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Mark McClure. Mark is a biological dentist, integrative medicine dentist, holistic family dentist. He's got a long list of formal education, including Catholic University of America, University of Maryland, a general dentistry residency at the VA hospital here in Washington, DC, and today, Mark McClure is going to be talking about the eight underlying causes of disease. Will you please help me welcome Mark McClure? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I'm okay? All right, great. Um, first of all, you take a look in your program and you're sort of like, look at me, look at your program, there's something that doesn't jive. And there's a few things that don't jive. First of all, well, you came here to hear about the, the eight causes of underlying disease or, uh, or um, root causes, and I'm throwing up seven. First thing. Second thing is that, where's Bob Johnson? My, my partner, Bob Johnson, is actually here in spirit. And that's why we have this chair there. We'll be using that chair a little bit later, I think. But uh, anyway, he couldn't make it. He had a family emergency. So um, he pulled me off the bench. And I'm uh, very, very happy to be talking to you today, especially a group that I perceive is really into health and understands health in a little different way and is really trying to do something about it. Uh, last week, we were at another group, the Mind Body Association, or Mind Body, whatever it is, Deborah Norris's group, uh, thing uh, coming from, uh, and there was another lot of people there that really were about, hey, what can we do about this? They had, traditionally, they had a little bit more of a mind, you know, mindfulness kind of approach to it, and I tried to bring in the other side of the, the picture here. Um, and um, so, how many were, were there last week attending that conference? So, just a handful, great. I noticed you guys were, so before I think everybody is, right? So anyway, we're gonna talk about the seven underlying causes of all health problems. And what I wanna do is I wanna address this. Let me see if, if I can make this work. So it's kind of push the buttons and Which one do I press? I press this one. Got it. Okay. So a little bit, that's who I am. I'm, um, um, I've been a, uh, involved in a lot of things. De dentist is my traditional degree. I got a degree in integrative medicine from Capital University of Integrative Medicine. After that, I became the provost of Capital University of Integrative Medicine, which put me kind of in a leadership position. And it was a wonderful experience because for 130 months, I was able to Every 130 consecutive months, every month for, four, or for three days, I was able to bring pretty much the best in the world into uh, a, a uh, uh, organized around a curriculum, and I was the one that was organizing it. You know, in a way, I had, had plenty of help. I had 200 plus uh, faculty members, and there were two or 300 people that matriculated through the program. Um, it's not no longer. It will arise from its ashes at some sometime in the future. But it, what it taught us was a, an incredible amount of information on really what I'm going to be speaking to you tonight about, today about, and that's integrative medicine. Because we were all clinicians. We weren't educators. Um, and we all brought the best that we could find from around the country, around the world, to Capital University, heard what they said. If we liked them, they kept on at faculty. If they did, we didn't like them, we just took them, you know, we kind of moved on. So we were able to move through a lots and lots of people you know, over 500 people from around the world. And we got trying to figure out what the essence of integrative medicine is, and I'm gonna to try to share some of that stuff with you today. 
I do, um, 95. Uh, the dream of Dr. Johnson and a few of other, others, we started National Integrated Health Associates. We have a booth out there, and I hope to have you participate in at least our information because we are a service and an information organization. The information's free. The services, unfortunately, are not, but, they, they're, they're, but they're moderate. We try to keep them that way. And, um, um, and we're going to, you know, we'll talk a lot about it. I'm going to try to keep this in a very informal way. So as I talk, if somebody has a burning kind of thing that you think that you want to ask me, please answer, you know, bring it, up, bring it forward. I have enough time, I believe, to be able to answer questions at the end, too. So if you want to write them down. And at the end, if you have any problems, whether it's your problems or other problems, you want to have a, somebody talk about after my talk, if you want to say, hey, maybe he may have some insights into how to approach this, I'd be happy to talk about it. Whether you have autoimmune, chronic pain, cancer, you know, Lyme, whatever. Because we're going to take a little different vent here on this today. We're going to take about what we learned through those 130, 140 consecutive months at Capital University of Integrative Medicine and what was the consensus of that group of people, which I'm very proud to be a part of. Um, that's about all. I, I, my vet, a, a professor of, of applied neurobiology, I look at things through the autonomic nervous system. That's my gig. I mean, so if I overplay that hand a little bit, play, you know, beg, I, I beg your indulgence, but that's kind of where I see it. I'm not just a dentist. I look at what dentistry screws up, how dentistry screws up your, your neuroimmune system or your autonomic nervous system. So that's kind of where, I'm, I, I, where, where we go. So let's start a little bit with a definition, and we'll make this quick because everybody hates reading stuff. I do too. You know, what, what is integrative medicine? Well, you know, at the big picture, it's conventional medicine. I'm traditionally trained, conventionally or, or uh, uh, traditionally trained, uh, alternatively oriented, and it's this functional medicine or complementary alternative, whatever you want to say about it. What's important about integrative medicine is that you are at the center of the decision-making process. It's not a top-down, kind of like our conventional situation, where, doctor, please help me. Oh, thank you, doctor. You did such a wonderful job, doctor. And the doctor heals. <laughs> this is the doctor. He's healing, you know? You know, kind of like some other people did. But, you know, in, in this situation, the patient is so actively involved in that, and we'll go through why, you know, that you know, thing. But we're just look, kind of looking at the big picture. In integrative medicine, we're really trying about, we're talking about restoring function, aren't we? And function then relates back to the title of this, seven root causes. So we'll go through that and kind of, kind of enumerate that a little bit as we go. Um, we have to have models, integrative medical models, and they're very important. And we're going to go through a couple of those models because that's really the mo my most fun thing that I like to talk about. Um, and I'll tell you where we got those and how that works. And then those models really have to have the ability to basically map you through how to be as healthy as you can, or if you're on the sick side, how to regain your health. It's the same stuff. That's the secret. That's the dirty little secret. It isn't different. It's the same. And those models have to also reflect not just current information, science, science-based. Oh, that's how I, that, I mean, first of all, the, the biggest joke, oxymoron, is medical, um, uh, medical science. There is no such thing as medical science. There's too many variables. It'd be joked, laughed out. So we do have to look at science, no doubt about it. I'm a, I'm a doctor. I, you know, science is important. But there's also ancient wisdom here, too. You know, we sh if we can only learn what, your, what our grandmothers learned about how to take care of ourselves, we'd be a lot better off, I think. You know, so that there's this ancient. So we keep, keep that in mind there. Um, a couple health, con now these are going to be some some of Johnson's slides and some of my slides, so we're going to have to kind of do, do it, whatever. Um, we recognize, I think, that symptoms are the body's way of talking to us. Okay? Symptoms are the excretory units that try to get bad stuff out of us sometimes, whether that be through inflammation or whether that be through, um, you know, bowel disruption or whatever it is. And symptoms need to be worked with for sure. So that's a one difference, and, and, then, uh, and then, so rather than obviously suppress, obviously we need to suppress it sometimes. You're running a 108 fever, you gotta calm it down. But, you know, I think we overdo it. 
We also understand, too, is that our bodies were designed not by the AMA or not by the, um, you know, um, NIH. They were designed over millions and billions of years, and they were designed to be self-correcting. So if we can just get some of these root causes out of the way, then we have a good chance of things happening. Does everything turn out to be successful? No. Because there's only two things. There used to be, say, there's only two things you had to do in this world. You know, pay taxes and die. Well, pay taxes doesn't seem to be the, the thing. So it's just dying now that we're, that we're working on. But that's anyway. And again, you've got to be your own. You've got to be your best. Oh, OK, so that has a little beeper there. OK, you got to be, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the best provider. You're the best thing. Now, this is going to be a little hard for you to see. You don't have to see this. I get, if those are up front, you can see this a little bit better. But we have a copy of this at our booth. And I have also, and, and you asked for it, there's an essay that we wrote on this. This is one model of integrative medicine. And this was designed and promulgated and you know, he, uh, whose name is on it is my, my mentor, Dietrich Klinghardt. Um, if anybody that knows about integrative medicine, he's kind of like the, one of the teacher's teachers in integrative medicine. Does anybody, has anybody heard of Joe, Merc Joe Mercola here? Okay, most of you have. He's his teacher. He basically, so what Joe kind of comes up with, Dietrich is the one that, you know, I remember Joe in the, in the, in the late 90s. He was like that, like with those cameras. He was taping everything Dietrich said, you know, and of course then, boom, here, here came his website. And he's done a wonderful job with it. But anyway, this is kind of a model or a map to help you under, help us understand ourselves. Now, we know we're spirit, mind, and body, don't we? That's the whole human being. The ancients looked at it as five. You could say eight levels. You could, I mean, but we're using five levels because this is an ancient Ayurvedic model that we're working with here. So let's go through these levels so you can kind of get a feel for how we as an integrative, med how we as an integrative medical doctor think and how you as an integ integrative medical patient could think, okay, and what you can do or what you can't do. At the bottom here is the physical body. The physical body really is composed of what you can feel. You can, you know, it's your structure. It's your biochemistry. And, if, and, and so therefore then physical medicine, biochemistry, structural medicine are the sciences that we work with. Allopathic medicine functions very nicely in this, in this thing. What we do for testing for that is that we feel your body. We image your body. We take blood samples out of your body and we kind of look at it. And we come up with, this is the problem, or this isn't the problem, this is in the range of the problem. So it's kind of a black and white kind of thing. You get a diagnosis. We all know the way the medical system works. It works really well here. Now, how does this function? Let's say you have a bad back. That bad back can come, and this, we'll talk about chronic problems, not acute problems. You just say you have a chronic bad back. So you go to a chiropractor, and he manipulates you. You go to a physical therapist, and they work with your muscles. Maybe it's a man manual physical therapist that does a little bit more. You know, maybe it's a different kind of chiropractor that does a little bit more. But then they put a toe lift in you. You go to the dentist. He puts a splint in you. These are all physical body manipulations of your, of, your, of your body. But let's say, and let's say that takes care of the problem. What do we learn? We learned that this, this phys the problem was in the physical body. It was a structural thing that, that happened. And or, you know, and therefore then it changed it. And now we're back into homeostasis. We're not into pain where everything's fine. But let's say it didn't happen. It didn't work. So then you go to the next level, because these higher levels regulate the lower levels. The next one is the electromagnetic level or the autonomic nervous system level. You can call it the autonomic nervous system. You can call it the chakras. You can call it the meridians. You can call it anything you want, the energy system, whatever it is. It's electrons at work in your body. What's chi? Deficiency of energy or deficiency of electrons. 
When you have chronic inflammatory problems in your back, it's deficiency of electrons. It's also chronic inflammation, isn't it? That's deficiency of electrons. Don't have enough energy. Don't have enough electrons. Okay, positive ions zap you. Negative ions build you up. Electricity. Do we, are we electrical creatures? <laughs> of course we are. Does that have a regulation effect over the rest of our body? Of course it does. You know, has the Chinese looked at that for the last, you know, with their observation for the last 5,000 years and had lots of correlation between that? Of course they have. It wasn't just discovered in 1972 when Nixon went over to China and said, oh my God, there it is. You know, oh, I mean, we're so smug sometimes. Anyway, electrical system. Now what's the, um, and so we, we have electrical, um, you know, functional medicine is part of that. We have, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, electronics is basically is what, is what the science of that is. We have testing tools that stress that nervous system and get information back from it, don't we? Whether that would be thermography, whether that would be EAV, uh, whether that would be field dynamics like the, you know, the Zyto or the Astra or one of those, whether that would be muscle testing, which is what I do, whether that would be um, heart rate variability, whether that would be pulse testing. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we have. Or would that be the, the lie detector, for God's sake? That's a biofeedback tool, been used for 100 years. So there's a lot of testing tools that we have that help us understand that. Now, what you do is you stress the nervous system and you get information back from it. When you're using those testing tools, it isn't black and white. There's a feel between you and the, pati and the patient set up. You are as much of that field as you can. Therefore, then, can I, can I bring on an effect of that? Of course I can as a practitioner in that field. So we've got to recognize it isn't just, oh, this is, this is what it says. It's no, there's an interpretation there. It's not, it's gray. It's more gray. And that's why our traditional brothers can't get it. That's fine. They don't have to get it. But that's kind of, that's the dynamics that you're dealing with because you're dealing with a field phenomenon here, right? It's a psycho neuroimmunological system. And you can put the hormonal piece to that. So it's the limbic brain, it's the autonomic nervous system, and it's the, it's the, uh, uh, immun immunological system all kind of combined into one. That's what works there. And it has its, own t it has its own manipulation tools. How to manipulate that? One is add electrons. Isn't that cool? How can you do that? You can do that through uh, many stimulation. You can do that through electricity going in. You know, microcurrents adds electrons. You do that through lasers. How do lasers work? Well, they'll, they blast the, uh, the membranes, and those, what do the membranes do? <laughs> Create electrons. It's energy. It, you know, so that's how lasers work. Or at least that's how the, there's, I mean, lasers work in a couple different ways, but uh, they, they piggyback information on, into, into the system, too. Uh, acupuncture certainly has, works that way by moving the chi. What you're really doing is moving the blood flow. If I have chronic inflammation here, what is the one of the things I don't have is blood flow going in there the way it needs to to heal, it, to heal this thing. So therefore then, I need to increase the blood flow. How can I do that? I can do that through, you know, needling maybe certain acupuncture points to increase the blood flow. And of course, a, a, a classical Chinese acupuncturist will basically, everybody's different. You're not the same. I mean, you can, it's not a cookbook here. They'll take pulse diagnosis. They'll take tongue diagnosis. They'll, they'll look and whatever. They'll see what's deficient. And then they'll kind of start manipulating as they go. That's really the, the art of that. It's not just a thing there. And a lot of people, there's a lot of good people out there. We got a couple, some of the best. I mean, we got one guy that's like fifth, sixth generation Chinese medical, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, from, from China, obviously, um, Peter, uh, Dr. Peter Wu. I mean, he's, his father, I can't say Dr. Wu, I don't know his first name. I mean, I do, but it couldn't, I could never say it to, to save myself. Um, you know, he's like fifth generation and Peter's the sixth generation and they, his father says Peter's better than he is. So. So anyway, there's a lot of good people out there that, that do that. But anyway, neural therapy is one of those other things. Reprogramming your immune system your, or your autonomic nervous system so that you're not hyperreactive to something. That's allergy elimination. That's another thing. Laughter. 
Those are some of the tools that you can use. Tapping, you know, EFT, MFT, whatever you want to call it. The next is your mental body. That's what we're thinking. That's psychological. Psychological. You don't have a thought, attitude, and belief without having an emotion, and that emotion is connected to your body. That's the mind-body connection. You know, you can test for it. You can test for it in, the, in here if you want. You can test it a lot of other ways, because that if it's a stress that is a problem for you, it will create a autonomic disturbance so that you have ways of figuring that out, whether it's be heart rate or whether it be muscle testing, however you want to do it. So that's kind of way that's put together. And classical homeopathy treats the mental first, the emotional second, and the physical third. That's, you know, uh, that's the way that, that works. Uh, there's other tools to, un to take care of unresolved psychoemotional issues that occur from in utero, sometimes at conception, on. By two or three years of age, there's a lot of unresolved psychoemotional issues. These are things that we're not able to quite get out all the way. We, for whatever reason, are stuck in that emotion. And that, when that emotion gets stuck in us, you know, then our nervous system, our limbic system, has to remember it. The limbic brain, the amygdala, the, the hippocampus remembers the hippocampus remembers the, you know, the the, the, the event, the the emotion and the event, the, and the uh, and uh, the amygdala is the emotion actually. And yeah, I don't know, it's somewhere else, it, it's all mi mixed up in there. But anyway, and that's remembered for the, for your life. That triggers different problems that you may have later on in life that keep on occurring, and it also is connected to muscles to shut down, or structures or organs to shut down blood flow. Now, why do have, what, what do you mean, this sounds crazy. No, it doesn't sound crazy. This is what you do all the time. This is what people that were attending that conference do all the time. And they can, and, you know, you can figure that, that stuff out. So it is a, and what happens when treatment is you've got to go back to the original event, acknowledge it, unlock it, Re reprogram and you're off and then that does that original event doesn't doesn't occur. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I was um, um, say I was molested by a woman who was had um, brown eyes and brown hair as a two year old happened to be my aunt. This did not happen, but let's say just to say it happened. And wow, that was overwhelming for me. I couldn't say a thing to anyone because she's my aunt. So I had to bring it inside. That night, I may have thought about it all, all along, but after a couple days, through rapid eye movement, I was able to dissociate that horrible memory into the amygdala, the hippocampus, the gyrate nucleus, you know, all over the place, so I can get the event and the emotion and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the timing kind of out of the way. Now that, now that became a, a change from an acute um, post-traumatic problem to a subacute, or so I didn't remember it anymore. But every time I got around somebody with brown eyes and, and, and brown hair, I got triggered, okay? And I was furious, and I was fearful. Well, we know that, that those kind of emotions are in the liver and in the kidney. So we go, I go on, on, on my way, and, I, and it so happens I marry somebody with brown eyes and, you know, and, and, and brown hair. And I'm living with this now, unaware of what's going on. I all of a sudden develop kidney disease, and and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, liver disease because the lack of blood flow going in there because it's always being triggered unbeknown to me. I'm going to tell you is that every chronic problem that you have has an unresolved psychoemotional event that could be treated. Okay? So if you know about this, then it can't. Not, not that, that you have to do that in order to get better. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that these are big deals, okay? So that's that. That's that level. And that's kind of how that works. 
The, ancient call, the ancients called the, the next level up is the fourth. Jung called it the dream body. You're, you can call it the intuitive, my intuition. I just got that feeling, you know? Now, everybody in here, if you're health conscious, knows what I'm talking about, because you get the feeling. If I tell you, um, Cindy? Cindy, okay, I didn't, Cindy. If I tell you, Cindy, you know, I think that this root canal here is causing your, you know, your breast problem, you know? I'm gonna just give you information, but I'm saying, Cindy, what you need to do is you need to take that home with you, and you need to pray on it, you need to sleep on it, you need to think about it, you need to research it, and in your heart, you're gonna figure out what's best for you. Because this, this is where the heart speaks. This is where the mind speaks. This is where the heart speaks. The mind is all about me, me, I'm number one. I'm the, I'm, you know, everything involves around me. When you get to the heart, that's about bigger things. You know, a bigger feel. That's kind of, a, the, the, you know, more community oriented. So if you're working that way. So anyway, and you're pulling from, you know, whatever you want to call the, you know, the, the consciousness, the world's consciousness. And don't think that wasn't used. How do you think Einstein came up with this stuff? How do you think, uh, anybody know the, you know, the story of how, uh, how uh, Thomas Edison discovered all the stuff he discovered? He went to sleep. He had two balls in his hand, and he went to sleep with the thought of what, am I, what, am, what, what the problem he was trying to deal with. When he actually went into Delta, you know, went through Theta, and he went into Delta, the balls fell out, out of his hand, he had a pot, and he was training himself to keep his eyes closed. He was tapping into the Akashic record. And that's the way all these guys did it. It's there for us, too. Just get that cortical monkey brain out of the way that hits everything, that, you know, thinking, and then, and then let it settle down, and you can, you can listen to the wisdom of the universe very easily. In this world, we work with family systems in our, in our practice. Family systems, I mean, you could also think of karmic things, too, but family systems are a... Uh, has anyone ever worked on th with family systems before? Okay, so a couple hands, that's great. Uh, you know, we come into this world with our genes from our parents, don't we? You know, our genetic map, so to speak. You know, our, and of course, it, map, it reflects in our body. We also come into this world with an energetic from, the, from our parents, too. Biblically, sins of the father, you know, are, are born by the children of progeny. You know, there's, uh, so this has been going on for a while. However, what often occurs is that things that occurred transgenerationally get played out by the kids or the parents or whatever. And again, big thing, big problem. And as we transgress mankind more and more and more, you know, these things become bigger and bigger and bigger. Yesterday, or last week, I shared a, 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 um, um, a story that I wanted to, I, if I told you to hear it twice, I, you know, it's a great story because I can talk about this because it involves me and my, and my uh, daughter. So let's look at this model here and let's look at it, how it is in action. I have a daughter who is 26 years old now, beautiful girl, and if you take a look at her smile, that smile could be my, in fact, if I had any brains, I'd make, I'd make this a, the smile of Naya dentistry, you know, because it's just so big, so great, you know, and, and, and she's a pretty girl too, so of course I'm biased. Anyway, at age three, she didn't have such a mouth. She had a very crowded, condition that was overbite and you know and this is I'm getting into dental terms you don't have to do that but anyway the point being is that and she was grinding her teeth all the time and you know so she was sleeping in between my ex-wife and me a lot and so we were listening to the hearing that all the time so there was a lot of dental stress going on and so I raised her bite early when she was three or four and then we started expanding her jaw out some Dr. Johnson who's sitting right here by the way um, is, uh, was, was the dentist doing that cranial osteopathic uh, orthodontic work. It's really cool work that he does. And even at age six or seven, after we did this for a couple of years, when one permanent tooth came in, two baby teeth came out. So that's the crowding that we had still going on. 
So, and at that time, I was, at a, I was with the dental group. Uh, it was another practice I started over in College Park. And uh, orthodontist, pedodontist, everybody there said, oh, you gotta take teeth out. I mean, it's just, you know, take teeth out, move things back. That's kind of the way den traditional dentistry does. I said, no, we're not gonna do that. So anyway, we did this. But I knew Kaylee was having trouble. So I was doing cranial work, I was doing acupuncture, I was doing all my lasers and my mini stems and all that sort of thing. And then at age 11 or 12, I forget what, Kaylee says, you know, Daddy, I've had a headache every day of my life. Well, the world's greatest dentist wanted to take a sword, stick it in, and see if I could actually get around because I couldn't even fix my daughter. That's pretty pathetic, isn't it? So what does this model tell us? Did I do everything I could on the physical body? I thought I did. Certainly we did. We raised the bite, we moved things out, we were working with the cranium, we did everything. Did I do everything we could at the, at the electrical system, on the, on, at the electromagnetic system, or the autonomic nervous system, the chakras? I thought I did. I was using lasers, I was using mini stems, I was using cranial work, again, that works at that level. I was, I was using acupuncture, I was using everything I could. I was, and she says, Daddy, it ain't working. So what does this model say? Where do I have to go? Higher, absolutely. So I either have a problem, unresolved psychoemotional issues, or I have a transgenerational issue going, going on. That's Johnson talking right there. He, he moved that. So what we did is we went into, the, we went into session, and this was like in 80 or 98 or so. And I had the family map worked out, so I knew that pretty well. And when we do, there's two ways of doing family systems work. It, it was going to, you know, we, we, got the, we got the idea through our feedback that we needed to go to family systems. And there's two ways to do this. One is through constellations, which is a very dynamic way. That was where we would create a big circle and I would have my story and I would have people that are moderators kind of work through that. You would be me, you would be my wife, you would be my daughter. And when you get into that circle, all of a sudden things happen. You just, you're, you're a play actor, but it, you know, you're overcome and you're going into certain positions. And of course those things are, you know, what are you thinking? You know, Cindy, you know, I'm thinking, I hate that son of a gun over there, you know, whatever it is. So that, that's how you can play those things out. And if you think that's, I mean, it's, it's an amazing thing to, to have done for you or to do for somebody else. But anyway, you can do this via with, with an individual too, because you can stress them as, as they go through this. So, it, and it went to, the, the thing went to, unbeknown to my daughter, had no, she had no clue of this, went to the first child that my former wife and I conceived. But I was party of aborting it. I knew better. She didn't know better. I knew better. And the abortion obviously, you know, happened early and whatever. My daughter had no clue that that was, that that was where it was. So it's a, this is a dynamic that's set up. You have to expose it. At that point, I realized I needed to ask forgiveness to my daughter, who I was party to this, you know, not, you know, for the rest of my life. So, but I'll tell you, that was the last time Kaylee had a headache. So my point is, is that if you take care of what's up here, you have a really good chance of regulating below. If you take care of down here, you got a foundation, but you need to understand that you sometimes have to go up. If you have cancer, you have a problem up here. If you have autoimmune, you at least have a problem here. If you have chronic fatigue, chronic Lyme, chronic back pain, you at least have a problem here. So that's that model that we're working with. And of course, that works for, you know, you got to get better and, to get, and, and not get better. Okay, so if we talk about integrative medicine, and I've talked a lot about that, we have these models, and of course, they're therapeutic and prevention. You've mentioned that. We, it's, compl it's conventional, we're conventional, so that sometimes you absolutely need drugs. Drugs are a very important part of your, our arsenal. But then there's also this functional side too. 
and the functional side is, is what we're really talking about here. There's multiple teams involved. There's naturopathic, and by the way, you, you, know, you can meet uh, Dr. Franson out in our booth now. She's a, a Klinghart certified uh, uh, naturopathic physician. Uh, and there's really, in, that, in fact, there's the only one I know of on the East Coast. I mean, the only two, of, I'm, I'm one too, so we're together there. But we're the ones that have been, you know, she's, she knows this, this is her gig. She's, I mean, she lives and dies this stuff. But you need medicine, you need dentistry, and you need others to basically make this things, make, make this things work. Why, why do you need dentistry? Here's a little plug on dentistry for a second. I guess I better do it. Is that in dentistry, if you're looking at root causes, there are four or five things that you can't get away from. If you have mercury in your mouth, with every chew, breath, and swallow, you're putting more mercury in your system. And then we'll talk about in heavy metals, the first rule of heavy metals is to get it the hell out of your body. Okay? If I was wearing lead boots and I was taking, I had lead poisoning, what would I, the first thing I, would, I should do is take my lead boots off and then I can pull it out of my, you know, my, my bowel and pull it out of my pee and pull it out of my sweat and pull it out, of, you know, and, and put IVs in or do whatever the hell you want to for detoxification, which we'll talk a little bit about. But first thing is get away from the source. Okay? Dentists, you, you need that if, if we have screwed you up before then. Root canals are another problem. Root canals harbor bad bugs. It's like an anaerobic breeding factory. Anaerobes are bad deals. Once, you get, once an anaerobe gets into that root canal, I'm sorry, it's, not going to, it's just going to throw its toxins out. Those toxins are, you know, shut down blood flow, shut down uh, a lot of things and, um, and become problems. Jawbone cavitations are another. That's where your body will tend to dump and store its toxic stuff. A lot of times where, root, where wisdom teeth were removed, like in my situation, 18, I had a whole mouthful of mercury like everybody else my age did, and, and uh, root, wisdom teeth came out. Um, I was a college athlete. I was a great high school athlete. I was great, you know, I was a mediocre, or above average college athlete. Um, in dental school, you know, uh, I injured my arm and my he had a couple of shoulder operations. My shoulder never healed after that. Never healed. I couldn't sleep but two hours a night before chronic pain set in. So I went till I was about 45 and I started understanding this stuff and I knew I had a cavitation here, maybe 50. Is that when I knew I had a cavitation here, big old cavitation here in the jaw. I was at the dental group at the time. I had a, remember a little guy, uh, um, he was an oral surgeon, uh, An Phan. He's a uh, Vietnamese guy, and he didn't, of course, they didn't believe a word I was saying, you know, what do you mean cavitation? I said, well, here it is. Look at it on the x-ray, you know. And uh, so I said, you know, do you numb me up, just dig. I was his boss, so I could order him around. Cavitation is a hole in the jawbone where your body will tend to dump and store its stuff. So it looks like a hole. So basically, and as I continue with this, what he did is he opened it up, and out came some green gook kind of stuff that was just disgusting looking, and he was like, Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, it was really kind of cool. So he was, uh, you know, and it was news to him, you know. And I said, now you got to cut down in here underneath, you know. So anyway, that's the way, that was how we were doing it then. We don't do it much anymore now. We're injecting ozone into it now. So it's a, it's a whole lot easier. Uh, but after I fixed that, I could sleep again. I got blood flow to go to my, and this is only 5,000 year old information. I mean, it's, you know, you just look at the, tooth, the, the organ charts and the tooth organ charts and all that. Like, we only learned that 5,000 years ago. So, it doesn't, you know, we're, 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 we're getting there. So, cavitations, uh, what is that, TMJ. But TMJ is a problem when it shuts down the cranium. That's what the problem is. You know, there's run-of-the-mill TMJ and then there's TMJ that shuts down the cranium. And sleep apnea. So, those are the things that you need the dentist for. And a biological dentist is, you know, understands that. We talked about the patient because really 90%, 80%, 90% of what you, how you heal is what you do at home. And you guys are learning all about what, you, you know, what to do at home to, you know, here. It's very important. I can't understress that. You are the one that is the, is the person that, that deals with that. And uh, so we talk about seven steps to wellness. Um, seven steps, this is what our outline is. Again, it could be, we like, I like the word, I like seven because seven's a kind of a magic number. 
but diet and lifestyles, that's obviously, that's the starting point. That's, you know, where we all really, and I think that probably you wouldn't be sitting here if you didn't really thoroughly understand that. But, you know, we got a lot of problem when we talk about regaining our health, don't we? Got a lot of problems because we are going against a lot of disinformation. I mean, I could talk about it in, uh, you know, an industrial complex and put medical or food or, you know, whatever you want to in front of that because that's kind of what it is. And um, we have, get, you know, they've put nutrition facts on all our food now, haven't they? And this little thing of yogurt has 16 grams of sugar. What's, what's a gram of sugar? Does anybody know? I mean, we know what a teaspoon of sugar is, don't we? Okay, we know what that is. We fill that up, we know what that is. Does anybody know what a, how many grams in a teaspoon? Yep, four point something, right. But few people know that. Very few people know that. I talked to all my doctors, none of them know it. In fact, this is the first audience that actually knows that. So congratulations. And, you know, when you take a look at how much sugar you're supposed to be eating, which is, you know, in a day from all sources, which is about, you know, what is about 10 grams or 10 teaspoons, and how much you're eating now, which is about 80 or 90, or not maybe not you, but most people are, no wonder we have metabolic disease. No wonder we have all the problems we're having, diabetes and whatever. No wonder we have the, the issues. And by the way, this causes chronic inflammatory disease. This causes cancer. Oh, McClure, don't give me that. It causes cancer. Yes, it does. Because your, uh, you know, your um, interleukin-6, your uh, tumor factor necrosis alpha, your, uh, um, and some of the other things is actually jacked up when that happens. When you have insulin resistance, when you have leptin resistance, and your body's in a constant, I got to... I got to feed myself, or I got to, you know, I'm in starvation mode, so if therefore then your metabolism is down, your liver gets fatty, you know, everything, you know, things start happening. That's, that's what chronic inflammation is all about. And inflama inflammatory markers rise. So that's what we're fighting. Anyway, diet and lifestyles is a big deal. Your bowel is incredibly important. That's where all life and death begins and ends in the bowel. Mind speaks for itself. Mindfulness, quiet it down. That whole week was, uh, 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 was devoted to that. Healthy home. You know, modern li living is screwing things up at a rapid pace. The devices that make things really cool for us also have a negative impact too. So we really gotta be aware of what's going on. Oh, I can, isn't it great to have Wi-Fi all over? No, it's not great to have Wi-Fi. Maybe great during the day, but it's certainly not great during the night. You know, isn't it great to have all these electronics? No, it's not. It is okay, but put them in their proper place. Understand hygiene, noxious energy hygiene. Understand that your air sometimes is worse, in, in many times, is worse inside than it is outside. And outside, I'll tell you, it ain't so good because of the chemicals, because of all the other things. So you can't s stop learning about all this. And you know, our office is dedicated to doing this, and there's a lot of people, I'm sure, health coaches and whatever, dedicated to, for that information. And our job here is to make this simple and easy, because it's, if it's too complex, the masses aren't gonna take care of it. Who are we talking to, really? We sh you know, we're talking to maybe 50, 100 people here, but we should be talking to millions because it's Anacostia that's screwing up. It's, it's also in, 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 in uh, Potomac, too. But this is really, we gotta think about how to make this simple. Certainly, you gotta exercise, you gotta function, you gotta, you basically, you gotta, you know, work, work, um, um, use it or lose it. Uh, healthy mouth, I sort of talked all, already about that. And the last thing I want to talk about is a detox for life. Detox for life, I mean, we live in a very toxic world. You eat organic food, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? You think you don't have any lead or mercury in your organic food? Where is it grown? Comment. Why 
It's a good point because I'm a dentist and I'm making, I'm making a big deal out of it. So, you know, this it, is just kind of so you focus on it because, you know, the healthy bowel has a lot to do with, you know, your probiotics and your digestion and your immune system or whatever, and the mouth is obviously a reflection of that. You, you're, you're right on, on that. But the bowel, I can't talk about mercury fillings and root canals and cavitations and TMJ and sleep apnea and whatever else so easily, so that's why we did it. Besides that, I needed to get to seven, you know? <laughs> so it was, you know. So if we put all this together and look at this in a way, and we'll just look at this as a summary here. And again, we have all these, these are all present at our booth, or if they're not, you can get them. You have conventional medicine on one side that has a certain standard of care. We know what that standard of care is. That standard of care is we're taking a history, we do an assessment, usually a physical-oriented assessment, and we come with a, up with a pathological assessment, a diagnosis, don't we? And that's fine. That's important. You got pancreatic cancer. You have, you know, schizophrenia, whatever it is. It's give you an ICD-9 code. Then you have the other side of the equation. Now, how do we negotiate that? Remember, I'm an athlete, as I mentioned. This is my playbook. In football, we got our big playbook, but it kind of got diluted, diluted, diluted to one piece of paper at, at game time. And actually, it got even put on somebody's wrist. Now, that's, how, that's how we were able to dilute it down. So this is the playbook. This is the playbook that got scrubbed at Capital University of Integrative Medicine by uh, the, some of the 200, maybe three or 400 of the biggest egos in, in, in integrative medicine. The, the wildest cat heard ever assembled to come in and agree that, yeah, this is pretty close to why, what we think it is. So I'm kind of proud of that. So anyway, so we have history the same way. We have functional history, though, whether that be an Ayurvedic history, whether it be a Chinese medical history, whether that be a naturopathic history, whatever, it's kind of getting to where's the function. When did you first start having your problems? Ooh, I got to hustle. OK, <clears throat> when did you first start having your problems? You started having your problems when you, um, you know, had your wisdom teeth taken out. Because that's when I started having my, my um, um, allergies. My, so my allergies, that's when my chronic fatigue set in. Okay, well, so what, you go back and you go back and you say maybe, maybe cavitations are a part of that. So that's kind of what you're hearing there, to give you an example of that. You have biochemical labs functional labs, and there's volume, a lot of cool labs out there that can really pinpoint that. Dr. Gant, Charles Gant, in our practice, is an expert at taking all these biochemical labs and really putting it together. And uh, then you have your biofeedback tools, and it comes up with either things are either have dysautonomia or you have dysoxygenosis or the milieu crappy. That's what the chronic problems are. And it's due to too much of the bad stuff, not enough of the good stuff. Hyperreactive, since I have to be a little bit more creative now because I'm running out of time. Um, uh, you're either or hyperreacting to the good or the bad stuff. You have energetic problems, disturbances, EMFs, geopathic stress, that's where you're sleeping, and radio frequencies, screwing up things. And, and those of you that are electro smog sensitive, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you who aren't, you just haven't felt it yet. Again, these are all stress things here that we're dealing with. You have toxic foci. Toxic foci are dead, bo dead body parts or seemingly dead body parts that house toxic things that your body's trying to keep in storage, trying to sequester. Sequester is a great term in this, in this town right now. So we're dealing with dead, we're dealing with scars. Hey, the ancients knew that 5,000 years ago. These are problems. They're electrical problems overflowing into your electrical brain, making things crazy. And they are physical problems that basically are overflowing into your lymph system and other places, you know, making things crazy there, too. And so you got dead teeth, you got cavitations, you got infected or, uh, t um, organs and other things. Then you got your major structural problems and then, of course, your psychoemotional, psychospiritual things. So are we healthy? No, of course not. Yes. 
Scars are a, I mean, the ancients knew that they were energy blocks. You have a scar, you know, uh, here, your, 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 you know, your stomach and your spleen meridian can do whatever. But the Germans in neural therapy realized that scars have a, uh, ha have a lot of, um, um, they're batteries. You have two types of tissue with two different uh, um, membrane potentials there. And they also will encase lots of toxic stuff. So as your body tends, you know, because it's obviously active things, whatever's toxic gets dumped into whatever's active. And in doing so, you're going to get um, a little, um, 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 an energy, uh, uh, like pacemaker, aberrant pacemakers coming out. That has to be, dr uh, that has to be um, drained through your sympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system can only take so much, you know, when, until the, until the, you know, the, 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 um, uh, the, central, the central part of that starts to say, whoa, that weight, we're overloading. So it's kind of, you know, in this whole stress business, it's all about overloading the circuit. That is a electrical overload problem. So treating that, yes, I'm going to tell you it's a, it's a problem. Go up there and talk and go and, do, and say I want the information on neural therapy. Okay? Yeah. Well, if you have root canals, what are you supposed to do? Uh, well, if you have root canals, um, you have decisions to make. You know, if you have a problem that you're not able to resolve, and it can be connected to that, then you have a more urgent problem, you know, decision to make, and then if you don't have any problems and you seem to be dealing with it. Now, I'm saying there's a lot of people that seem to be able to take, you know, deal with their root canal issues, you know, pretty well, um, seemingly, and then there's, but they, they're, they're silent. I mean, they're not a, you gotta go to somebody that has some tools to kind of relate things uh, to basically do, you know that, you know? So, and, I, I, and basically, once you get that information, I bring it back to you and say, okay, you just sleep on it, pray on it, do whatever you think on it, and you'll know what's the right, right thing for you. The bottom line is that you gotta usually get them out. Dentistry is the only profession that says, we can keep dead body parts. Dead body parts are okay in dentistry. Medicine, they don't seem to be. So anyway, so um, maybe I should, because we're just about t t up with time, five minutes. Um, why don't I just open it up right now? Um, I mean, obviously, I have a lot of more. Excuse me? Go to the center mic. Here. OK, got it. So let, let's just open it up a little bit, and we'll. Um, so um, how do you find out if you have fillings? Is there like a, a date? based on age, if they're amalgam or mercury or when that was banned or not doing it, how do you check that out for yourself? If you how do you, you find out them? if you have mercury fillings? Yeah. You look. Anything that has dark, anything that's dark in there, anything's dark in there is a mercury filling. And you say, well, they've been put there 20 years ago. Well, we've taken mercury fillings that are 50 years old, and all you have to do is rub them. Remember that mercury filling is 50% mercury. You rub it, it's going to give, I mean, there's going to be more given off in the first week or two than there will be 50 years from now, but between two weeks and 50 years, it's the same. Yes, yeah, an x-ray will show you too. Right, sloppy taking these things out, there's, yes. Um, when it comes to uh, mainstreaming deeper wellness practices, uh, you were talking about the value of really being real with, with where people are at in their process. I guess I'm curious how you lead people from the state of uh, shock and denial about what's happening in their life into a space of um, like integration and uh, receptivity. Basically the theme of take back your health, the theme of deep sovereignty and deep freedom and deep wellness. I was just wondering what you found through your experience with Capital um, and also with Naya, what's the most helpful process for, for, um, for reality checking people? Sure. Well, that's a hard question, and you're not, you're not allowed to ask any more hard questions. <laughs> uh, 
on, I think it's, everybody will deal with that differently according to their experiences. I think the only thing that you can think about is that you know, when people come to you, you can be honest about what's going on. I have made the mistake of trying to tell people what to do. I think that's a mistake. I think I can give them information and they, I think they can, because really telling people what to do is, is down here. You know, this is where I, I tell you what to, you know, up here, if we can transcend up into this area where we live by, you know, by the energy, we live by influence, we live by, you know, when, if, do you think that going into the Dalai Lama's presence that you don't feel something? Or Margaret, I mean, not that we're, no, I'm not saying that, but that's kind of, we have that same thing. So I we think we have to live by example. I think we have to walk our talk. I think we have to always struggle to be healthier. And eventually, it catches on. The reason I ask that is Congressman Tim Ryan mm -hmm. at the last week's Crime Body Week. Yeah. I know you all both play football. And yeah. You both have street cred in that way. And I'm wondering, he, he felt like he was having to use the term evidence-based all the time to get through the Western mind. Yeah. He doesn't allow okay. it let me tell, talk about that. We're talking about talk, Congressman Ryan, who is a, geez, a mindful congressman. That's also an also, uh, oxymoron, too. You know, in order to do that, I've been working in this field since 1980. So I'm very aware that what we're really having here is a industri medical industrial complex that is very tied into keeping things going. I'm also aware that there's energy in the earth, there's energy in people, there's energy in whatever, and there's a little bit of, you know, what I would think of truth that's going to eventually overcome that. You obviously continue to keep going. But if you don't call it terrorism, it's, you know, it's not, you know, it is what it is. And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a, with a government, we're dealing with a industry, we're dealing with the phony organizations, and we're dealing with the media that are in collusion. Whether they are aware of it or not, I think there are very good people involved in that. But that's what you're dealing with. That's what you have to overcome. And all you can do is just kind of do your thing. You can actually awaken people by leading through example. That's what you can do. Eventually, see, everybody gets sick. Eventually, everybody gets sick. And they either look for answers or they don't look for answers. You know? So that's... And if, they, if answers are out there, then you can kind of do that. Um, your thoughts on oil pulling? Oil pulling. Isn't that cool? Yes. Oil pulling's been around for a long time. Ayurvedics have it for forever and ever. And, um, you know, we... There's a handout out there that, that I have on skin oil, whatever. So oil pulling is a great thing. I do it... Try to do it as much as I can. What you can do is you can do therapeutic stuff. So you can do your oil pulling and add some oregano oil into it or some weather. That way you therapeutically work with your mouth a little bit differently. Oil pulling is holding oil in your mouth, uh, whether it be seed oil or, um, I mean, um, olive, oil. olive oil. No, olive oil tastes pretty bad. Um, uh, coconut oil, coconut oil, whatever you want to, and swish it around. What happens is that you have a, your, your mouth is very, uh, is kind of a radiator. There's a, all your blood vessels are very close to the, to the surface. And as your whole body's blood kind of goes through your mouth over 10, through 10 minutes, oil pulling will help cleanse the, the, the blood because now you have a lot of, of um, fat-soluble oils sucking the bad stuff out. So it's a great, it's a great tool. Uh, when I, before I had braces when I was 14, I had my jaw expanded as well, and I'm so happy that they didn't pull teeth. Are you seeing that becoming more common now? Yeah, yeah, we have. I mean, again, in 1980, when we were, when we, you know, we were saying this is the way to go, and of course the orthodontists and the pedodontists were saying that isn't, you know, this is the way we do it. Now, over 30, 30 years or so, they're saying, you know, this is the way to go. So yes, it's, 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 in, it's got into the, into the conventional things. Last question, okay. Hi, uh, I would like to know what do, you, how would I recommend to my patients uh, if they're going to a conventional dentist and you've uh, figured out that they need to pull out the, the, the metals, like how do you, what do you replace it with? What kind of uh, inert materials or I don't know exactly what. 
two questions. One is what you're replacing it with. The other question which you should have been answering is how are they taking it out? Because there's such a thing as being, you know, removing your mercury, but then in as safe a way as you can. My, my overall thing is that ask there to, for, to get all our information on, on our protocols for that. They were, we wrote those in the 90s, early 90s, and they've been really adapted by everything else. Let me give you a thumbnail. Is that when you come in, we first of all take care of the hyperreaction that you have. That usually is done a week before. Every toxic metal you have, every toxic thing you have, your nervous system is, is putting it in storage. And in order to facilitate storage, you need to create a hyperreaction to it. That kind of keeps it into storage. That's this thing is that that's, you know, it's not just uh, toxic, toxicity is not a biochemical problem, only it's a regulation problem too. That's what we say there. So you got to take care of that. Then we have you on chlorella for a, a week or so beforehand. Chlorella is a great binding agent. That's one of the tools that we have to do that. The third thing we do, now when, then when you come in, it's all about getting them out safely. So your mouth is coated with chlorella. It's under a rubber dam. That rubber dam is, or not rubber dam, it's another kind of dam. It's coated with chlorella. We're wearing gas masks. There's two big suction machines that are sucking everything out. They're sucking overhead. Um, there's, you're breathing out of a separate oxygen source because we have documented that when I take that mercury out, what am I doing? I'm, I'm vaporizing the mercury. And, va and mercury is a very volatile thing. I mean, you, and so therefore, the, and it's, the EPA would shut me down if I, you know, with that air right there. So I'm protecting myself, I'm protecting you, and I'm also sucking everything out and that's going through charcoal filters to, to clean up the air. If you don't test your guess, so we have a mercury vapor tester that we're, that we're looking at how, how when, 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 have we when, when have we rendered that, that air totally clean. And then that's when you start your detoxification process, the medical part of it. Mm -hmm. So you've already done the dental piece, now you're dealing with the medical piece. So, and then you take it out in chunks, you're not trying to vaporize it. And then what, you, what we put in is, you know, composite resins that are the, what we think are the safest. Or, Don't those composites or, have metals in them, some of them? No. 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 It's all plastic? Yeah, yeah they're, they're different kinds of plastics okay. and whatever. Any specific one that, that you use That most? we use? Diamond Light, we use Helium. Diamond Light. I mean, those are some of the ones we, we there's a few others that we use. All right. Thank you. Okay, so it um, looks like I'm getting the, the pull here. Um, anybody that wants any kind of information, uh, on, on cancer, Lyme, whatever your thing is, go up and, and just write out if you want, you know, just fill it out. Dr. Franson is, is here today. She can carry on. Um, and I, unfortunately, I got to take my wife to the airport, so I'm not going to be here today. I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, and um, thank you very much for your attention. These slides, I can make these slides available to you. I'll get those. Say that you want this slide. There's a lot more where these came from. I got about halfway through, but anyway. Thank you.